What's up guys, it's Yesk here. Today I wanted to talk about radial symmetry and how you can use it in your logo designs. So radial symmetry is simply just symmetry around a specific point known as a central axis. A simpler way to explain this is symmetry that isn't just on two singular points like horizontal or vertical points. It's around 360 degrees, no matter which angle you put it at, it's symmetrical around that one point. A good example of a logo I created using radial symmetry is this logo right here that I posted on Twitter, Dribble, and Instagram a few weeks ago. And that's a good example as to how you can use radial symmetry in your logo designs without having the final product symmetrical all the way around. Personally, I'm a big fan of mathematics. I've been using them on a lot of logo designs over the last few years on my Instagram. I'll probably put a few up here right now just so you can see. And you might notice they're not all symmetrical, but they do use the same principles involved in this tutorial. Even if you're not very interested in mathematics, it doesn't take math to learn. It's pretty simple and pretty easy. It just takes a bunch of rotating and duplicating and moving around. So let's get into that right now on Illustrator. So now that we're in Illustrator, I'm just going to create a new document. I'm going to call it Radial Symmetry. Don't know how to spell, I guess. Let's see. I'm going to make it 1080 by 1080 and put the RGB color mode on and then hit create. Now that we have this, I'm going to turn on the grids with command and the rotation symbol, or you can just go to view and then go to show grid right here. Mine says hide. And then we can snap to grid by using shift command and the quotation symbol again, which is view and then snap to grid right here. So once that's checkmarked, make sure that snap to pixel is not on. Once you have your grids on, we can use the ellipse tool with L or just selecting the shape here, holding it down and going down to the ellipse tool. And now we're going to create a circle that is eight by eight on this little square here. So once we have that, we can set the fill to nothing and then set the stroke width to 4.5. That's pretty good for now. So now what we're going to do is duplicate this circle with control C, control V. You can also use alt shift and click and drag to duplicate, but I normally just use control C, control V. So what we're going to do with the second circle is drag it so that the center is on the end of the other circle here and vice versa, I guess. Once we have this, we can duplicate this one again and just simply put it on the other side here. So now that we have this, we can select them all and then deselect this middle one here just by selecting shift and hitting that one. And we can duplicate these two again, just how we did before, drag them over top of one another and then hold shift and rotate them 90 degrees. So now we have this flower looking thing here. And I think that's a pretty good start for radial symmetry. It's a very basic structure. Now what we're going to use is the shape builder tool, which is shift M or it's just right here, the shape builder tool. And what we are going to do is start just deleting things as we see fit. So for this one, I think I want to create some sort of flower because that's kind of the centerpiece here. So now there's actually two different ways of removing lines with the shape builder tool. One of them would be just holding alt and dragging across the path. And the second would be selecting that specific path and holding alt and removing it. Uh, they do have different effects. This one that holds all and clicks the specific path actually just removes that path from the contents of it. So you can see here now that I have her over this uh, circle, that path is just completely gone. Um, an actual, a good example of the other one here would be using this piece here. So let's just drag it over, remove it. Now you can see that this piece is connected still with this one. But if we just selected this one right on the actual path and removed it, it would just be deleted from this circle here, as you can see. So they do have different effects and knowing when to use them can be useful as well. Yeah, so for this one, I'm actually just going to hold Alt and click on these specific paths here. And they definitely have a different result on the ends here, which we can change after I've removed them all. Uh, let's do it like that. There we go. So now we can just edit these properties by hitting stroke up here. 
and then going to the cap and changing it to round. And that'll make it look nice and clean over the edges. So what we can do from this point is start changing it up again. And I don't really want the end result to be symmetrical all the way around, like radial symmetry would be. I actually want to just start with radial symmetry and define a new logo from it. So I'm just going to start removing these edges here. I'm just gonna slide across for these two. And then I think I'm just going to use these two and flip them right here. And I think that's a pretty cool flower looking logo, so we can just remove those. I think that looks pretty nice. And then I'm just going to create a line that goes down. And I think that looks nice, honestly. So what I'm going to do is just leave it here for now. Uh, if you wanted to, we could add fill and whatnot to change it up. Just like so, quickly add it. This isn't really a tutorial on colors, so it'll just be quick here. Just cover that, there we go. So there's a basic little flower logo. Let's make this pure black. There we go. And that's just one example as to how you can use radial symmetry. And that's a very basic example. Uh, the next one I'm going to start with is a square. And I'm going to do the same eight by eight. Let's see, no filling in. And just that 4.5 stroke. Let's make sure it's pure black this time. There we go. Now from this, I'm going to duplicate it here. Just like how we did the circle, the exact same way. Do it again, put it on the other side, grab the other one and duplicate them both at the same time, drag them over top and rotate them 90. Now the only difference with this one is I'm going to grab these two again, along with the top and bottom two. I'm going to duplicate them, put them over top and then rotate them 45 degrees by holding shift and dragging. Now it's a completely different shape and I still think we can make something cool from it. So I'm just going to select them all, use the shape builder tool here, and simply start messing with it. That's all I'm gonna do. Uh, let's see. Let's move this here, this here, this here. I normally just like to go all the way around the radial symmetry here and make sure it's all the same with the things that I'm editing. these, these right here, just all the way around because it'll look weird if I just left one of them. All right, so it looks like we have a start of some sort of camera icon, potentially. So let's just start moving these little triangles inside here. I'm just going to remove this one. And I think this can actually have a circle in it. So we're just gonna do that just to make it a little more round on the inside. So all I did was create a circle and put it on the inside here with the same stroke and everything. And I'm going around with the shape builder tool, going across it and adding. Technically you could remove as well. I just prefer the uh, combining the shapes here because it just it's just a bit quicker. So let's try it on the outer ring as well, just creating a circle that goes around it all. And then we are going to, so what I'm going to do for this one is just combine them and then delete them or just delete them both at the same time by holding alt and dragging across them, these spaces here. And that's a pretty generic icon for photography. I think it might be cool to try it inverted, so I'm going to change the fill to a pure black this time. And then the stroke to a white. So we're going to send this big circle to the back by selecting it and holding Command, Shift, and the square bracket on the left, or the starting square bracket. And now it looks like we have a nice little camera icon logo. It's really nothing special, but it just goes to show you how easily it can be created using radial symmetry and basic shapes like squares and circles. And if you wanted to edit this in the future, you could potentially like change the colors on these 
maybe make it have a bunch of shades of blue or maybe like a rainbow going through it. So I'm just going to change it up really quickly here. And now I've just deleted the inside. If we wanted to keep the inside, maybe we can change it to like a, one of the medium colors or maybe that pink at the end. Maybe we can make it a little bit smaller here by just creating a new circle and deleting that one. Yeah, I don't know. However you guys want to do it, that should be fine. Just a quick example. But just the basic circle and the basic squares are all I plan to cover in this video. If you learned something in this video and you want to share it, definitely tag me on Instagram or Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like if you learned something. Thank you guys for 400 subscribers. For 500, I'm going to give away one of my embroidered hoodies. I wanted to do that to show my appreciation for the community that I've built. And I hope you guys do subscribe if you're interested in seeing more content like this or receiving one of these sweaters. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day and peace out.